Okay, we're gonna get straight into it. My next poet that I'm gonna call to the stage, he performed with us about four times. He comes in with his boy, and I'm gonna call him straight to the stage. Put your hands together for Kafani. Put your hands together for Kafani. Kafani, come to the stage. two joints for you, two poems for you. Um, the first poem is dedicated to some females, not all though. It's called, uh, She's Just a Plaything. He would never make her part of his plan because she slept with him and her, his friends. She loves to draw attention by the message she sends. I often wonder what her intentions are. A long-term plan with a man or a man that's packing inside his pants. Some woman stands up so low that they were sleeping with a man if he drives a Benz. She doesn't wait to give him the prize. She gives it up on the first night, thinking that will make him satisfied. But little does she know, some men just play with hoes and settle down with women that are potential wives. She's wasting her time by confusing sex with love. Maybe as a child, she missed a couple of extra hugs. Men treat her like a dirty rug. They toss her around or leave her out to dry. Look at how she dressed, overexposing her breasts. Men see her as just another target at test, so they devour her flesh. Poor girl, she wants respect, but the signal she gives off says, come between my legs. Men get in her head, now lines are being fed. They sleep inside her bed, and she is left lonely, bitter, emotionally dead. Real men like a woman with class. When she walks, they know she's trash. She gives up the ass way too fast, and then that'll be the last time she sees his ass. Girl, he doesn't even know your first or last name because you just his plaything. Girl, he won't even give you a wedding ring because you just his plaything. Girl, he won't even introduce you to his mother because you just his plaything. Girl, he doesn't even want to be your lover because you just your plaything. All right, this last piece I'm gonna do is course. This last piece I'm going to do is called Save Dark Four. <laughs> Dear God, my heart is too broke to cry. Doesn't, don't ask me why, but I already lost hope, so I'm prepared to die. I must cope with the fact that people have no love inside. Give me some water because my throat is dry. My people in dark are soaking their oats, trying to figure out ways on how to stay alive while writing some notes trying to help end this genocide. I nearly choke as I see pictures of a little girl being swarmed by flies. Entertainers can promote their next clothing line, but can't give out more than a nickel or dime. I have icicles coming down from my eyes. As humanity, we are wasting time. Everyone is selfish. They don't know how to put their pride aside. It all began February 26, 2003, when the rebels raped and murdered the Sudanese. Dark Four is plagued with famine and disease. America is so in tune with the economy that they don't even know what's going on overseas. It's an atrocity that over 400,000 Sudanese was killed by the hands of the Janjaweed. It makes me wonder if this world is even meant for peace. How can we save Dark Four when there are too many wars in this world? I'm having visions of decapitated little boys and girls, parents' bones laying next to the door. There are no phones for the people in Dark Four to make local calls. Get ignored. Dear Lord, I know it's strange, but I don't want to live no more because they have money for war, but the poor. The United Nations just procrastinating, and the President of the United States is just castigating. No interrogation from other nations. The people of Darfur are patiently waiting for some salvation, but in return, they get a lot of hatred. It seems no one cares unless it happens to them. Just picture your family and friends walking around with no limbs or being used as experiment like chimps. While you eat eating lobster and shrimp, the people in Darfur are looking for um, days uh, then. People in America complain that they have it rough when the people in Darfur don't even have enough. It's over 400,000 plus bodies that are being tucked or being stuffed in a box while we counting our bucks, they over there running out of luck. Dear God, my heart is too broke to cry. Don't ask me why, but I already lost hope, so I'm prepared to die. I must cope with the fact that people have no love inside. Give me some water because my throat is dry. My people in Darfur are soaking their oats, trying to figure out ways on how to stay alive while I'm writing some notes trying to end this genocide. 